Let's now continue our discussion about um, confidence intervals, but this time I'm going to move from proportions to the idea of working with the mean. Um, and specifically, I'm going to talk about the mean under the somewhat unique situation where we actually know the variance. Now, I'm going to admit to you right, out, right from the beginning that it's very unusual that we'd actually know the variance. It's, it's kind of unusual. But this is a great place to start to get you to think of the idea of what a confidence interval for the mean is going to be all about, what it's going to look like, and then we would transgress into um, the way it's typically done. All right, now, I'm not sure if I've told you this yet or not, but confidence intervals are always, 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 it is always used to estimate population parameters. It is never, ever used to estimate a sample statistic. It's extremely important. Now, we want to estimate the mean when the standard deviation is known. The data types applicable is interval or ratio. Th those are only two uh, measurement scales that make sense to calculate a mean to begin with. You wouldn't calculate an average, a mean, for ordinal data or nominal data. Um, let's just jump into with an example and kind of work through it. Now, considering the following data uh, consisting of time in minutes reported for uh, a payment occasion to take effect, and um, estimate the true average time with 95% certainty based on a believed value, and this is kind of important, it's a believed value of 2.8 for the population standard deviation. So it's saying the standard deviation is believed to be 2.8 minutes. Now assume the population is distributed normal. That's kind of important because when we look at our assumptions, previously in the previous chapters when we calculated uh, probabilities regarding the mean, uh, we needed this distribution to be normal. We need it to be normal. So if I were you, I'd go ahead and pause the presentation. You can see the data values here. I would pause the presentation, get those data values into your calculator. That way you can work through this example with me. Okay, now, as a quick review, a confidence interval will have the basic form of a point estimate plus or minus the margin of error. Well, our point estimate for talking about the mean will be x bar plus or minus the margin of error. So we're going to need to define what that margin of error actually is when we're talking about the sampling distribution for the sample means. Now, from the previous discussions, we know that the sample means under the right conditions will be distributed normally with the parameters mu the mean of the sample means would be mu, the true population mean, and the variance would be sigma squared divided by n. What are the right conditions? Number one, um, we know the um, population is distributed normal. If we know that, we're good to go. Or, number two, the CLT applies. which means we have n of at least 30. It's either one of these. It's one or the other. It's not like the proportions where there's three things. You need n at least 20 and n times p hat to be at least 5 and n times 1 minus p hat to be at least 5. We need those three things. Here it's an or. Either one of these will work. Okay, so the confidence interval will look like x bar plus or minus. Well, we know that we're going to have a z of alpha over 2 in there, just like we did for proportion, because that z is our number of standard deviations that we're going to go away, times the standard deviation. Well, the standard deviation will be sigma over the square root of n. So that's what our confidence interval is going to actually look like. Now, the assumptions here is going to be that x bar is distributed normal. And in this case, it's reasonable. Because we're told, we're told the population is normal. We were told that. So we're in good shape. Now, to actually calculate the confidence interval, you could do the inverse norm. Um, let's see, what size, did it say what size to get? Let's see, go back here. 95% certainty. So 95% certainty, that's telling us that alpha must be 0 0.05. So you can go ahead, you can find z of alpha over 2 using inverse normal if you wanted. It told you sigma. You have the sample size because you have the data. Um, you can use the data to calculate x bar. You could actually do this by hand if you wanted. Um, personally, I prefer to let the calculator do all that kind of busy work for me. And let's go to the calculator right now and do it. If I go to stat, 
move over to tests, and if I move down, I see option seven is Z interval. The Z interval is specifically a confidence interval for the mean, for a mu, based on the standard normal. I will select it. Now, the first thing it's going to ask me is do I have data or statistics? If I have, well, let me select statistics just for a second. And what's going to ask me for? It's going to ask me for sigma, the standard deviation, x bar, the sample size, and the confidence level. Well, if I have data, I'll select data and see what it asks me for. It needs to know sigma and where the data is and the confidence level. Frequency is always one. It's very rare you change that. That means every data value in the list is counted only once. It doesn't need the sample mean because it can calculate it. Now, the standard deviation, it gave us the standard deviation in this case as believing that it's 2.8. I put my data in L1. I'm not sure where you put yours. Just enter the list where you stored your data. Frequency, I'm leaving at 1. Confidence level is 0.95. So now I'm going to calculate the interval. So this is saying the Z interval is, oops, let me change colors here. The Z interval is 13.886 to 16.930. So we would say, we are 95% confident the true average time is between 13.886 minutes and 16.930 minutes. Now, check with the instructor, but for my students, I also want you to tell me that this is, in fact, a Z interval. I need to know what interval you actually use. Reason being, we're about to learn another type of interval. I need to make sure that I know that you know which ones you should be using. So specify the, um, what the actual interval is, which one you're using, a Z interval. Okay, in terms of calculating a confidence interval for the mean, for mu, when you know sigma and I have data, that's it. That's all there is to it. So in the next section, let's take a look at a situation when we don't know sigma, when sigma is simply unknown to us.